Flowers that time who got a hand in and broke it up. You know, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. First and 10 at the 39-yard line. Stafford looks to throw again. They'll get this one to cut complete. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Second and three at the Seahawks' 32-yard line. Again, it's Stafford. That'll be caught by Cup. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 21. 12 yards there and a first down. At the 21-yard line. To the air again, Stafford. And his guys are going to take over at the 21-yard line. Well, partner, I, I got to tell you, I'm trying to think of something positive to say for this offense, but I'd have to be a spin doctor for that one. This has been a tough performance to watch. And I think it's hard at this point to actually identify what's really gone wrong. I guess the catch-all is everything. Doesn't sound like real sharp analysis, but I don't have much else for you. And the scoreboard just lopsided, and it's been ugly from the get-go. Again, it's Penny. And not much, maybe a yard to the 29. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. From the gun, a give to Penny. And they got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. A big hitter there, a first down gain of 26 yards. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. And he was hit as he threw it there, and it forces it incomplete. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. To throw again, Brady. And his throw is incomplete. That one doesn't find its target, but all in all, he's been much sharper this week. He was under 50% a week ago, and now he's up over 70%. But you know it's standard for quarterbacks and receivers to get together for a little extra time each and every day in practice. I get the sense they got together for a lot of extra time this week to try and improve that passing percentage, and it's worked out quite well. First down, Seattle, 16 yards the game there. They'll run with Penny here out of the shotgun. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. An 18-yard touchdown grab. And this offense is running away with this one. Well, they mentioned this week, Charles, they had a couple kinks on offense that they wanted to fix. I would say they're pretty well fixed. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. I mean, just about everything they've run has been successful in this one. And if I'm the defensive coordinator, I'm done with this, right? I have no answers for anything. In fact, I'd probably send a note to the clock operator. Let it run. Takes this about five yards deep. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. At their own 25-yard line. L.A. set to take over again on offense. And in enemy territory last time through the interception. We'll see what they do on this drive. Can't wait to see how it alters what they decide to do in play calling. 
Do they continue to throw the ball? Do they want to win the running game? It'll be an interesting sequence of plays that they've got coming up. Does it often affect the play calling with the interception? How, how much does that change what you do? I think it does depending on why the interception was thrown. Sometimes it's just a matter of the defense made a great play, so you continue to come back. But if it's on you, if the offense just doesn't have the confidence, if they're a little bit shaky, maybe try to take the pressure off and run the ball a little bit. 16 yards, a first down. First and 10 at the 46-yard line. A shotgun snap for Stafford. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. That one goes for 24 yards. Those are the kinds of plays right there that show you why he's the number three man in the NFL in terms of receiving yards. It also tells you there's a full combination of what he's got going in his game. You name it, from route running to catching the football. That's why he's able to produce those types of numbers. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. At the 23-yard line. Operating from the gun. Stafford, this one brought in by Jefferson. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? And he lost the football. And the Seahawks have recovered. And with that kind of a deficit, you can't afford to make any kind of mistakes. But it's been pretty symptomatic what we've seen all game with them, isn't it? Down, down this big in the fourth Yeah, you'd say an afternoon to forget, absolutely. First down now, here's second down. Following the fumble recovery, Stafford. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown Rams. Cooper Cup, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Rams use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. And that touchdown, well, it barely puts a dent in this lead. And unfortunately, I'm having too many flashbacks right now. I remember getting beat down like this playing before. Oh, yeah, college, high school? College, not a heck of a lot of fun. I still remember playing and trying to tackle an elusive tailback who ended up scoring four touchdowns, 226 yards. Times it had so many great runs, I knew every note to their school fight song. But that ice bath felt extra cold afterwards. Oh, no, oh, no, no, there was no ice bath. You're just trying to get out of there before the reporters got to you. Well, let's get Pays our attention as the offense takes the field on Rashad Penny. He's already hit pay dirt twice. He's up over 100 yards. He is feeling good. And he's just zipping along today. Everything coming together for him. It's that type of a day that you see a back just kind of have a grin on his face every time his number is called. Because he doesn't feel like there's going to be any lost yardage plays. Nothing but big time positive runs. Making the sideline grin as well. And they'll indeed take a knee. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long.
And they will take a knee here. Well, they certainly didn't appear to be fired up about their options throwing the football. So, to me, this seems like a case of just kind of taking their medicine there, run the ball, see if they could pick up something. Instead, they were thrown for a loss. And last week in the loss, five punts as he gets this one away. A 40-yard punt, no return. And the Rams will go on offense here for the first and ten. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. On first down, Stafford here. Well, Stafford for the third time is intercepted. Shaquille Griffin now pick. And his crew will take over with the football at the 35-yard line. Yet another mistake after the interception there. And, gosh, you look up at the scoreboard, they just got to be thinking this one cannot get over fast enough. It certainly can't. And also what happens when you get this big of a deficit, you're supposed to make all the right throws, right? You're supposed to try and obviously get the ball to your own guys. But being down this big, you also take even more chances. And in this situation, that hasn't paid off for them at all. On the other sideline, jubilation and laughter. And that one will go down in the books as just a one-play drive and then three points tacked on to the end of it. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it? L.A. readies for its next possession. Now, last time was it pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this try. See what happens. Defense. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they march off another 15 against your squad. They got a man over the middle. It's Woods. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. A seven-yard pickup. One of the feature points of the in route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's leaving the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. At the 33-yard line. From the gun, Stafford. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawks defense. By Shaquem Griffin. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, and with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. <laughs> Cooper Cup was his intended target, and it'll bring up third down. It's now third down and long. Operating from the gun, Stafford. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Woods. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. Despite a pickup of 16, they're still well short of the sticks on fourth. Well, he flew past 200, 300, 400 yards. Now he's over 450 yards passing on the day. So what you're saying is oxygen for everyone catching the ball and trying to defend? Yeah, especially those guys trying to defend right now. No doubt. They've got to be a confused group because they haven't been able to defend him very well at all. And I think he just wants to keep firing. When you have that kind of a day, you're just locked in. Just keep calling those pass plays. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. At their own 22-yard line. DK Metcalf of the Seattle offense about set to take over once again. A chance here on this drive to hit that often elusive 200-yard mark. For Throw him the ball. <laughs> Throw him the ball. Forget, forget analysis, all right? Let's just root a little bit here. Get him the football and get past that 200-yard mark. Well, you want that. You, you seem excited. I know, and it's really weird because normally I want guys to intercept the ball, <laughs> right. all right? I yeah. want to knock it down. In this case, he's been fun to watch. The former DB. B, rooting for the wide receivers.
just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Now here's Michael Dixon standing right on his own five-yard line. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. So a change of possession here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. Let's just be frank. They're playing for pride at this point. <laughs> that's, that's all that's left because victory, not a chance now. And I can't wait to see how they actually go about doing it because there are a lot of people watching the body language of the guys on the field now. And if they call plays they want executed, they need to do that and do it really well. Otherwise, there could be repercussions. We'll see how they handle the waning moments of this one. From the gun, Stafford. They'll find Henderson there. It's complete. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. Too much extracurricular there. When you have a game with a lot of contact, tensions are going to run pretty high. You're going to be emotional, but you have to harness it somehow, and he didn't on that play. On first and ten, Stafford. Looking now, and it's incomplete. Van Jefferson was the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Incomplete. Shaquille Griffin there defensively. Throwing again. Stafford. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. He was going right back to Cooper Cup, but now it'll be third down. Brings up third down and 10. Operating from the gun. Stafford. And he's got it. And somewhat of a measure of revenge as he's in for the touchdown. But they still trail big time. He'll take it, but he won't be able to smile about it. And yeah, that touchdown counts for their team. But I think it counts more for the fantasy guys, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just something maybe positive to look at on film. But this one's over, let's be honest. Yeah, I, th I agree with you totally on that one. Point after, right down the middle. As they make the score just a slight bit more respectable here in the final quarter of play. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. At their own 29-yard line. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And the questions are going to continue to mount for this club, no doubt. This will almost certainly be another losing effort. And the questions will become, you know, where do they go from here? Take a knee. Today's final score is Seattle. Charles, it's one thing to win, it's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So for the Seahawks, it took a while, but they finally get that first win after four straight losses. And they'll return home next week to take on the Green Bay Packers. Meanwhile, for L.A., the losses are piling up as they drop to 1-5 and five now. And they'll try to get back to their winning ways next week as they head to Santa Clara to take on the 49ers. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew here at EA Sports, I'm Brandon Gordon saying so long, everybody.